Okay, y'all. This is the video that you guys have been waiting for. Uh, for as long as I've been on YouTube or any type of social media, I always get people that um, ask me questions about, hey, how is it? Are you still in Texas? You know, how's it been? What's the update? Okay. And for a long time, uh, I said that I wasn't going to necessarily make this type of video anymore simply because I, I, I do feel like I, I spoke about a lot of things in the past. I made a video. It's been roughly about five years, um, maybe even longer, maybe going on six, where I highlighted and talked about, you know, the pros and cons of living in Texas. And I made videos um, talking about my transition from New York to Texas and kind of giving you guys my perspective. Now, when I made that original video, I want to say it was maybe a couple weeks uh, that I was in Texas. OK, and as people like to say, you know, I was still in the honeymoon phase. All right. And so there's been some time since, you know, the world is very different. Uh, we've had the pandemic. Uh, so I feel like, you know what? It is important for me to update. Uh, because I do have uh, some things that I want to say, uh, but I want you guys to, to, this is probably going to be a long video, okay? I don't know how long, but I feel like it's going to be a long video because there is a lot of things that I want to say, so um, definitely bear with me. I also have two stories that I, that I want to tell you guys um, towards the end of this video, so definitely stick around for that, that I feel is going to somewhat encapsulate and wrap up all the thoughts uh, that I have right now that I want to put out there. Okay. So without further ado, let's get into it. I'm not going to waste any more time. Okay. So let's start slow. Okay. Let's start with the basics. Um, I want to talk about, let's start, let's start off with the weather in Texas. Okay. Now, <laughs> Texas is very hot. It is very hot over here. I think most people are aware of that. When you think Texas, you think about the heat. However, what I think a lot of people don't realize, too, is that it does get very cold. OK, and the cold could last two, three months. And there is something that happens here that I, I have not experienced when I was living in New York, which is predominantly cold and predominantly the winters um, where you get like ice, like where there's sleet, OK, where it rains and it's so cold that there's sleet. And I did experience that, I want to say it was probably two years ago, uh, for the first time, where I could not leave the home at all. I'm talking about the roads was a complete ice, okay? You could have put on some ice skates and probably glided down the street. Like, as soon as you stepped foot on it, you was just sliding. Like, you really could have injured yourself. I couldn't even get up the block, okay? And that lasted maybe, let's say, two days of just complete ice. And the whole city was like, everything was shut down. Okay. I've never had to prepare for something like that before. Even when I think about the worst winters that I experienced in New York, I could still go outside. I could still go, you know, I could still get in my car, all wheel drive. I could still, you know, get somewhere that I needed to be. Right. I'm talking about the city, like it was shut down, man. Like you couldn't get out. And so <laughs> I've, I've heard people talk about it. I had never experienced it, but when I did experience it, I was like, oh no, like every year now, like I keep, I make sure I keep some canned goods or something. Like anytime I even think that it's, it, it starts to get cold, I start to prepare because I, I like that, that caught me completely off guard as to how bad it was and then also a place like a texas is really not equipped for this type of weather and so when it gets really cold like that or there's something like like everything just shuts down okay and so keep that in mind you know if you come here because you are looking for warmer weather understand that it does get really hot but also understand you're not necessarily escaping the cold because like myself when i first got here i thought it was going to be all peaches and cream and it's all just going to be all hot and i ended up having to you know, hit my, hit my mom's up and say, Hey, I left a couple of winter jackets and thing in New York. Like I need you to send that to me cause I'm gonna need this. So keep that in mind. All right. It ain't, it ain't all hot. Next thing is I want to talk about the traffic. Okay. 
uh, because the traffic has gotten considerably worse since I've moved here. All right. Um, I remember when I was moving here and I looked at where the job that I would be at relative to where uh, I would be living. And I remember it wasn't that many miles. And I was like, all right, cool. You know, I can probably get there in like 20 minutes or so, 30 minutes, maybe. Um, maybe less than that. Because I'm thinking about New York and I'm thinking about the fact that, you know, most people are taking the train, the bus. Yeah, you get in the car, but like, you know, it's more of a luxury. And so you kind of can get to places relatively quickly. And so I'm thinking, you know, it's going to be like that. I'm cool. And then I get down here and I never forget, right? I was, I was working at this place. Um, I was working at a bank and I was late, <laughs> like my first day. And I was so mad. I had left my home in like 30 minutes ahead of time, like 40 minutes at a time. And I was still late. And it's because, and that was, and that was early on. This is like, again, when I first moved here, it's gotten worse because more people moved here. Um, they've tried to expand highways and whatnot, but like my best tip in living in Texas is try your best to work close to where you live. Okay. Like, like really it, it's, it's going to be, trust me for your quality of life. Trust me when I say that, because I met people who have to travel an hour away. And even myself at that time, it ended up being like an hour to come home. Listen, it's stressful. Okay. Because you're sitting in the car, you want, you know, you got to pee or you got to eat. And it's, trust me when I tell you, try to, make sure that you are minutes away <laughs> from home uh, if you can help it, okay? So that's, that's another tip. It's gotten very crowded for sure. Um, so now that we got those things out the way, um, I also want to talk about opportunities uh, from what I've seen just in driving around and interacting with people. You know, if you are in the medical field, this is a great place for you to live um, because there's opportunities there. Baylor is one of the biggest um, hospitals I believe in, in in Texas and the nation. Um, they have a big like uh, cancer center and whatnot. Like, if if the medical field is your thing, you know, uh, they say Texas is known for the uh, for their silicone. Okay, um, so I'm just saying, if you if you're into that field, like you will do very well in Texas. Uh, I met a lot of uh, business owners who is into technology. Uh, so also, if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to get off. Uh, you know, you're trying to start a business around that. Texas is a great opportunity for you. There's a lot of tax breaks you get, you know, as a business owner, um, which brings me to another thing, right? Uh, I, I, most people should be aware of this, right? Because there's only a few cities that, that do this, but like Texas is a no state income tax uh, state. And so a lot of businesses tend to move here as a result of that. Uh, for example, one big company like Tesla, I know, uh, moved to, to Texas. Um, and so there's, and as well as other companies, other fortune 500 companies. And so being able to, to cut some costs there, uh, but even you as an individual, not having to pay state income tax and the fact that the cost of living, uh, isn't as high just means more pocket, more money in your pocket. And just means that you can live a lot better. You can do a, Your money's going to stretch a lot further. So definitely keep that in mind. Okay. That's just a couple of professions that come to mind. I'm sure that there are others engineering, um, you know, things like that, like, you, you, you know, you're going to do well here, okay? Uh, even if you're trying to play sports, right? If you're trying to do football, you got Texas A&M. Um, like, you know, you, you, you can do well here in terms of sports as well, okay? So that's, that's that. Now, I'm going to get into some other things, okay? Some other things that I, de that I think is very, very important. Um, and I'm going to try to be as forthright and honest as possible. Um, and may, I might be a little bit, a little blunt. OK, so but just understand that I really want to do my best to convey my experience to help you uh, make a decision on. Again, I, I, I'm not saying you need to necessarily move to Texas. You may want to move to somewhere else, but just to kind of share again my experience for those that that care. OK. When I first moved here, I want to talk about racism, OK, because when I was thinking about moving to Texas, I remember uh, I had a friend who he was white, really good friend of mine. We worked together and I remember him kind of telling me like, hey, man, you sure you want to live there? Like it's it's, you know, it's racist. Texas is racist. Um, and ironically enough, he knew someone uh, who did his family's real estate who 
was living in New York, moved to Texas, moved back to New York, and then moved to Texas. Okay. And then some things happened within their family and they're no longer in Texas, but he knew that they would, they had just moved back to Texas. And so he actually connected me with them at that time um, to kind of get some advice on how Texas is and whatnot. Right. But I want to touch on this because I also had uh, one of my siblings that was like, hey, Texas is racist and this and that. And so um, <laughs> I really want to try my best to kind of convey what it is that um, at least my point of view, or at least my perspective on this. First and foremost, um, I don't think that there is a place on a planet that you can move to where you. 100 percent uh get away from racism or what you might deem as racism right because when you think about your interactions with people you might get the same type of negative reaction from both from both from from either a black person a white person and you might just feel like, hey, the white person, it might be because you are black, you might call that racism, okay? And you might have an interaction, a negative interaction with a black person who's maybe trying to rob you, hurt you, kill you, whatever the case may be, okay? And you might feel like, well, that's just, you might call that something else, right? I have had more negative interactions with people in New York, that look like me. Now, I'm not trying to say, I want to be clear, I'm not trying to say that New York is inherently racist. I'm not saying that. I'm simply saying that as someone who grew up around 98, 99% of people that look like me, I'm saying times that I've had altercations and beefs and whatever, with police and whatnot, they look like me. Now, when I flip it now, when I'm in Texas, where in my experience, I'm not saying ain't no black people here. Of course there are. But the majority of people that you're probably going to be around, it's, it's almost polar opposite. It's, it's mostly Caucasian. I've had, to my surprise, more positive reactions than I would have thought. OK, now let me rewind again. I am not saying New York is inherently Texas. I have a lot of people that I've interacted with. Like I said, I was born and raised there. Um, I have a lot of people that I love there. A lot of people like like you are who you I mean, these are people that you're around. So I think part of it is like, hey, if I'm around people like that's that's just who my interactions are going to be with. But I've had situations where, you know, I've been pulled over excessively by police. OK, because I had a nice car, I took that same car and I came to, to Texas. And I had one interaction with police and I probably I'm not sure if I've ever shared this story uh, on YouTube, but I'm going to share right now. When I first moved to Texas, um, I was getting things together, you know, making sure people, the guy comes to set up my cable. I had to buy a new TV. I didn't bring any furniture. I had to do everything over. OK, I preferred it that way. So I remember I was waiting. I had went to Best Buy. I got the TV and, and whatnot. And I, I called up my cable company at the time. And I was like, hey, you know, can you come and install this? And I, and I remember the person had arrived a lot quicker than anticipated. So and I was heading to uh, Whole Foods at the time. And I was and the person reached out to me. and was like, hey, you know, I'm here. And I said, hey, look, I'm, I'm at a Whole Foods. Um, I'm on my way back home. I'll be there in just a couple of minutes. Please wait. The guy was like, hey, man, no problem, man. Take your time, whatever. And so I was already like, you know, I'm like, hey, let me try to get out of here because, you know, it, it's hard to get these people to come out to set things up for you. So I was like, damn, if if I don't get it done today, I don't know when I'm going to get it done. And so I was in, in heading back home, not realizing I really wasn't that far. But again, I had just moved here. I want to say it was probably my first week. And I'm coming back from the Whole Foods. There was a... um basically a school zone. Okay. It was a school zone, but they used like a flashing, like it was a, it was, it was a flashing light. And I wasn't sure, like, I didn't see the sign. It was just my negligence, whatever. I didn't really see the sign that said like, Hey, this, you know, this is school zone related or whatever. 
And so I was, cruising, you know, going above whatever it said. I think it's like usually got to go down to like 20. The most highest is 20 miles per hour. I, I might have been doing 35, 40, whatever. I was just, you know, going. And police officer pulls me over. He's like, I was like, damn, what does he pull me over for? Pulls me over. He's like, hey, man, you know, I pulled you over. I was like, nah, I don't know. He was like, look, you know, it's a school zone. Light was flashing. You're supposed to be doing 20. You were doing about 30, 35, whatever. And I was like, hey, look, officer, man, I, you know, I, I still had New York plates. Still had New York license. I had not converted anything yet. I was like, hey, man, I just moved here. I didn't realize that that's, that's what that meant. I'm not really familiar with the area. I was just trying to head back home because um, I had someone waiting for me or whatever like that. And, and so the guy was like, all right, gave me back my license. He was like, hey, man, just, you know, try to slow down when you pass through these areas. I was like, hey, no problem, man. Let me go. Okay. Never had an interaction ever since. Been here about, like I said, five going on six years. Never had an interaction. I always drive a nice car. I always have tinted windows. I'm on my business. I never had, I, I don't have any problem. When I think about, um, and I have other stories as well, you know, like where, again, as a shock to me, because this is what I was hearing in coming here. Everyone's racist. Everyone's racist. This is what I'm hearing. I get here. Little things. You know, I'm taking out. Uh, I remember I was taking my bike out of the car. I'm, I'm, I'm moving things into my home, you know, for the first time. And it was this lady, white lady. She sees me. I got a box in my hand. I got my bike in one hand. I'm trying to get through the door. The lady, hey, she rushes up. Hey, I got the door for you. Holds the door. She's like, hey, can I help you with anything? Holds the box. Okay. While I go to my door, I unlock my door, hands me the box. Certain acts of kindness, like just people, again, I'm not, and these, and, and I have more examples of things like this, where again, when you come in with the mindset of like, Hey, everybody's racist, like something bad is going to happen. Something bad is going to happen. Something bad is going to happen. I'm still waiting for that to happen. It's not to say that I haven't had negative experiences with a person or two who, you know, Caucasian. But those things I can probably, uh, you know, say that had more to do with our difference in personalities, more so than anything else. And so I'm only trying to say if you are someone who is hypersensitive, OK, and again, I'm not saying people don't experience that. I'm saying if you are someone who's hypersensitive uh, to things that are said to you, maybe, you know, from a, if you're black and you're hearing it from a white person or whatever it is. Um, or you, you're, you're really kind of hyper fixated or you're really looking for these, these things to occur, um, you might find it. You might find it. Um, for me, like I said, I have not found it. And I'm telling you, I came in here with the expectation that that would be the case. Okay. Again, it's not to say that things don't happen, but I'm simply trying to say that this idea of somebody knocking on my door, pulling me out of here or somebody just rolling up on me or somebody denying me service or somebody, you know, I can't tell you how many people I see that's in the interracial relationships out here. I cannot tell you how many Caucasian women has tried to get at your boy. Okay. I'm just simply saying to you that if you, if you, if you go through life and you are, focused on trying to be the best version of yourself. You're focused on your family. You focused on business. You focused on money, uh, which I, I, I'm not saying you need to be hyper -fo focused on money, but like, you know, you, you walk a path where like, Hey, you know, you, you, you live with a purpose. All right. Things that most people will hyper fixate and say, Hey, that was racist. You probably just, it don't even, it don't bother you and you just keep it moving. OK, so that's my take on that. Do with it what you will. Uh, but that's just my honest opinion on it. OK, so so that's that's that. Um, another thing I want to talk about is the the people. Right. Uh, you know, I've talked about like the southern hospitality and people being very nice. Uh, one thing I could tell you, too, is that if you're somebody from the East Coast or maybe let's just say you have you have a certain personality that, you know, you might be very driven or you might be a go getter. Or you just, you know, you 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 always moving and grooving and you trying to get things done. You know, most people here uh, are very laxed. You know, they're very uh, <laughs> they're very laid back. Uh, they don't have the, sen the same sense of urgency 
Okay. And, and, and I've interacted with a lot of people. And again, it could just be my personality could just, but I think a lot of my personality, again, being in New York, uh, having a hustle and bustle and being around other people who's constantly trying to get it, go after it. People that are trying to build things. And it's like, when you get here, and you're interacting with people, you find that you have to be more of the driving factor to get people to do things. Because again, it's just not the personality I find of most people who are here. Um, and I think a lot of that has to do with like, again, cost of living. Um, you don't really need to have a really great job in order to live pretty decently. Um, so most people are just like, you know, they don't have that same type of push. From my experience, I'm not saying that you're not going to find people that are hyper focused and, you know, motivated and trying to get things done. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that I noticed that, you know, things are a bit slower here. Uh, I remember when, you know, working at uh, the job that I was working at, uh, my goal, my job was to get people to do investments. And so I was really good at doing that. Right. Sitting down with people and financial planning and trying to sell investments. And that's how I ate. And so for me, I grew up in, the, I, I was in the mentality in that type of business of like, Hey, I got to try to get the sale from this person. Now I ain't no tomorrow. When, in, when the people here, I, I remember, you know, I had to have one of my colleagues at the time just say to me, Hey man, like it's okay. She'll be back. This customer will be back. The people here a little bit more, you know, take it home. Think about it for a little bit. They'll do it. But they, you know, trying to push them to do it, you'll probably end up losing more people than where in New York, if I don't get them to do it now, they're probably not going to do it. And they really need someone to get them to, to give them that push. And so I had to change my mentality a bit, um, you know, when I was working at that job and, and I saw exactly what that person had to say, uh, what that person was saying and how that made sense. And so I just find that, you know, when I interact with people or just, just from what I observe, like people a bit more chill, a bit more relaxed. And so if that's, you know, if you like to kind of be around that and that's who you are, you'll fit right in. If you feel like you are somebody who's trying to put things together and you're trying to, you'll, you'll probably have to be the one to push for that. You'll, you'll have to be the one to get people engaged. Like they're not going to just, you know, you're not going to just meet several people. That's like, yo, I'm trying to get it. I'm trying to get it it's just like you, you know, you probably got to be that person to kind of push them. Um, so just keep that in mind, um, uh, as well. And another thing I want to talk about too is, well, I want to give you, I'm, I'm going to give you two, I'm going to give you two examples here. Okay. Because again, when I think about this video, I'm, I'm really thinking about things that I feel like you guys can take, you know, take and kind of help you with your decision. All right. I'm not trying to, I, I think you should want to live wherever you want to live. Um, but I'm just trying to share my outlook on it. And I have two examples. Okay. I have, I have two stories uh, that I think would kind of, kind of wrap this together. All right. Now, when I first moved here, I remember I, I went on a, uh, I went on a vacation. Um, I believe I was in, was I, I was in San Diego. I was in San Diego and I had a, a old coworker of mine reach out to me. She was like, hey, you know, I'm really, you know, just kind of, I won't say complaining, but just kind of let me know, like, you know, things ain't going well. And, you know, I don't know what to do. And, and I remember telling her like, well, you know, maybe you need to look for some opportunities elsewhere. You know, if you feel like you've been trying and you're not really getting anywhere, like you may want to consider uh, other opportunities. Um, and, you know, and she was like, yeah, you know, I kind of was thinking about like moving and whatnot, but like, I don't really know where to go or, you know, I haven't. And I remember I was just telling them like, Hey, you know, she, she know I moved to Texas and I was like, you know, I moved to Texas. I was like, so far it's been good. Um, and I was just telling her, you know, some of the experiences that I had. And so she ended up picking up her stuff and moving down here. Okay. Um, she had a child. Uh, she was at the time she was dating this other guy and she moved down here. Okay. Now, this person to this day credits me for a lot of the success that she's had. And I always tell her, like, look, you know, give the give the glory to the most high. Um, I'm not 
it's you who did that. Like, I could tell you this same way I'm telling people things in this video. It's up to you to decide what you want to do. You got to put in that work. I can't make it happen for you. You got to do it for yourself. All right. And she moved down here, guys. Okay. She moved down here. Got a degree. Um, I believe she got a master's. Um, got a really good job, high paying job. She works for like the Fed, federal, uh, well, not federal government, but like there's a, she works for the Fed down here in, in, in Texas. Right. She got a home. She ended up, she meet, she met someone new. So she's not with the same guy. Um, but she's doing very well for herself, very well for herself. Okay. And this is somebody who struggled, struggled in New York. Okay. Struggled. And every time she sends me a text, like, I don't know, every three months, six months, updating me on things. And She's just thankful. She's like, yo, I can't thank you enough. She's like, I tell everybody it was you. And, I, and I'm and i like, don't do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't do that. It's you. I'm happy for you. You made the most of it. Congratulations. How does it feel to be on the other side of things? So that's a success right there. Okay. Where somebody got out of their comfort zone or what they felt you know, a, a, a bad situation and moved on and made incredible strides. Okay. And then here's another story. I have a good friend of mine's homeboy reached out to me out of nowhere. I didn't even know this was on his mind. Hit me up and was like, Hey, I need to talk to you about something. I'm like, what's up? What's on your mind? He was like, you know, I felt like you're the right person to talk to because I've seen you do it and, and make no mistake about it. I'm not somebody who left New York because I had some problems with somebody or I had some money issues or, you know, I'm, you know, I, when I left, when I was in New York, I was doing very well for myself. Okay. Very well. Anybody who knows me watching this video, you can put in the comments, you know what I'm talking about. I was doing very well. I wasn't struggling. All right. So my decision to move here for a lot of people was very much a shock. And even now to this day, when I talk to people and they're asking me where I'm from or they find out what I've done, they always ask me like, what brought me here? And I end up, you know, giving them my reasons, uh, which I've highlighted in the past. Um, and we've had good conversation. You know, uh, there's been people who are eager to want to, you know, live in New York. There's people who want to visit. And I tell them, hey man, you know, great place to visit. I recommend certain places. Um, and then there are people who want to live and I'm like, well, you know, good luck, <laughs> you know? And so I wish them well. And they, I tell them, just do your research. Uh, and then they, they do their research and they, you know, come to whatever conclusion they want to, they, they come to, but I want to tell you about my friend, right? So my friend hits me up. He's like, you know, I'm not really feeling this situation right now in uh, New York. Um, he feels like he works very hard. Uh, he thought that, you know, where he's living now, uh, that he would have a certain type of lifestyle that he feels like he's not able to get, even though he's, he's paying a lot of money, um, to live in certain places. Um, he felt like New York was wearing thin on him, you know? Um, and he was just thinking about other places to live. You know, he, he looked around him. He sees that, you know, the company that he has, the people that he has around him are probably a bit more dependent on him. Um, and it kind of wears him down, you know, where he just felt like he wanted to maybe feel like, you know, maybe he needs to explore outside of New York and he, he really wanted to get his take. Uh, he wanted to get my take on, you know, just, you know, like what, what really got me to want to leave, uh, New York. And I remember, you know, and anybody who asked me these type of things, I told y'all this was going to be a long video. <laughs> uh, when people ask me these type of things, you know, I always, I always do my best to make it about them. And I ask them, well, what is it that you want? Uh, what are you looking for? Um, and I tell them what my mindset was. My mindset was always, what do I want to get out of my situation? You know, what is it that I, that I want to experience? Um, and can I experience that here? And for me, it's like, you know, I got out of the phase of, 
wanting to party all the time or wanting to be around a lot of, you know, hectic, uh, a very hectic environment. And <clears throat> I didn't want to be around that. I wanted peace and quiet. I, I got older. I wanted peace and quiet. Um, I wanted to, you know, meet, you know, the person that I would potentially spend the rest of my life with, um, you know, have a family settle down, you know, and just kind of focus on other things. Right. I, I wanted that space. I wanted that quietness, you know, the same reason why, you know, <laughs> if you watch Batman and, and how he had the, he had to leave, right. And go to the league of shadows and Raz al Ghul and try to really learn about himself. For those of you who, you know, the, the DC people out there, you know what I'm talking about. Um, same thing with Superman. He had to leave earth and go and, and figure out, you know what I mean? Who he is. Like, I felt like, you know, I had to go and, and kind of experience things on my own and things that I felt like after visiting a place like Texas, which is another thing you should always visit wherever it is that you're thinking about living. Okay. Um, and you know, back to this, to this person, I made it about them. Like, you know, what is it that you, you, you want? Um, and I just told them, you know, what was my mindset? You know, I find that the things that I was striving for or the things that people in New York would look at someone else and deem as success, a lot of it is the norm here, okay? And I looked at it and I said, okay, I, it would cost me far more to get the basics out here, okay? Rooftop, pool, um, drive, uh, parking lot, and like things, you know, things that like, you gotta live in a really good area to have like, you know, that sense of, you know, not being around and crowded around people in Texas, like that, that's just air, you know, central air is there. Like most apartments, they have, um, washer and dryer, you know, high ceilings and like, there's always constant construction and new buildings and like shit, they doing construction right outside where I live right now, paving out the roads and doing the water systems and build, they're always building something, right? They're always improving. OK. And I said to him, I said, why do I have to wait? Why do I have to experience far less just to say I live in this certain place? OK. And deal with the stresses of, you know, violence or, um, you know, just the things that could potentially happen. Right. I have to do so much to get out the, to 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 avoid certain things. OK. And I'm not saying that, you know, violence doesn't happen out here. I'm not saying things bad can't happen out here. It can. It can. Um, but for the most part, like I said, you have better ways of defending yourself out here. That's for sure. If you know what I mean. <laughs> Shout out to the 2A crew out there. Um, that's another thing. Um, you know, when you live in a place like Texas, Florida and, you know, other places where you can carry OK, that means that you can protect your family, you protect your livelihood whenever you need to. OK, because that is something you can't do in New York. You're going to have to rely on police. And usually when police arrive, that's after the crime has already been committed. So I'm not going to go any deeper than that. OK, but you could add that part to the list. So anyway. I'm, 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 you know, not to digress back to my friend. And so, you know, we, we had that conversation, right. And, you know, I get off the phone with him and a few months later, hit him up. I was like, Hey man, what, what's going on? What, 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 what did you decide? And so what, what he ended up doing, um, he left New York. Uh, well, he left at the time he was living in uh, Staten Island. He moved to New Jersey. Um, he met a woman, had a baby. Uh, well, not she's pregnant, right? She's, he's having a baby. Um, he's engaged. Um, and he feels much better about his situation. Right. And he told me, you know, I made some changes. You know, I, I did get around from certain people. Um, and it's helped his quality of life. Right. He, he did the best to upgrade his quality of life. And I, I bring him up because like he didn't necessarily leave like, you know, he, you know, going from if you live in Brooklyn and you, you know, most people, if you live in New Jersey, it's like, you know, it's, it's not that big of a, 
of a distance difference. Um, but what he took from my conversation was that he needed to do what was best for him. He needed to do what he felt was right for his future. Okay. And he wanted to maximize his quality of life and his potential. And he did that. Okay. And he immediately saw a turnaround in his life as a result of that, as a, as a result of, of, of making small decisions that had a big impact. And so in conclusion, if you're watching my video, if you've watched my past videos where I've talked about things in hindsight, I wish I would have highlighted this more in that first video. Okay. But at the same time, like I said, it was more or less the honeymoon phase. Now we're well past the honeymoon phase. I can tell you straight up. Okay. This is tried and true. I can tell you straight up. If you are thinking about living in places like Texas and you're coming from other cities. Okay. Just understand that wherever you move to. What the reasons are and don't expect that place to be where you came from. And I think a lot of people make that mistake. They like to say, oh, well, this ain't like Texas. The food out here ain't like New York, okay? <laughs> there was much more variety in New York. I could take you to any place in New York for whatever type of food that you like. I could take you to the best spot for that. You like Chinese? I could take you to the best spot. You like pizza? I could take you to the best spot, right? I could take you l and uh, uh, square pizzas, if you know what I'm talking about. One of the best pizzas out there in New York. I could take you to those places. Texas, not so much. You better like you some barbecue. All right. That Chinese food from the side, from the corner with the wings and all of that. The uh, $20 to get you like 30 wings or 50 wings and all of that. Ain't going to get that out here like that, man. It's different. It's different. You know, the golden crust. Yeah, they might sell it. They might sell a little beef patties in the, you know, but we know what I'm talking about. Ain't no walking into no be no no golden crescent getting no oxtails like that. There's places out here, but I'm just saying they're very, very few and far between. So that you know, I'm just saying when you come here or you go anywhere, you gotta do your best to adapt to that environment. Okay, make that work for you. Because if where you came from was so great, you would have stayed where you was at. And that's also a thing, and and that's that's a thing that I see a lot of people do wrong come here and they're comparing but then they want this place to look to be like that place it's not okay and vice versa new york is not like texas texas is not like new york and so forth and you know and so that is all that i have to say on that <laughs> um i know i went off on a bit of a tangent on certain topics and whatnot but again i felt like i owe it to you guys you guys are asking me for an update I'm doing okay. I'm doing fine. I'm alive. I'm here. I'm breathing. All right. Um, and I'm striving to do better, you know, and I'm, and I'm still on this platform trying to present, you know, trying to give good takes and, and, and good perspective. And I appreciate you guys for watching this video. Um, I would, you know, whether you like comment, whatever it is, um, I got more videos along the way. Uh, but again, if you have any comments, drop it down below. Let me know what you think. Um, hopefully, you know, I feel like I went over everything that there is to go over, um, again, in terms of the update, uh, but you know, uh, I guess, you know, another thing I could say is like, you know, during the pandemic, I mean, you know, Texas is like everywhere else, you know, with masks and all of that. I mean, I don't need to dive into that. Um, but again, a lot of people did move here from other places because things were a little bit more lenient and whether you, however way you feel about that, that's up to you. But you know, if you are you know, coming from out of the pandemic and you're looking at cities and you're seeing who handled this well and who didn't, you know, that's something you may want to pay attention to. So I forgot to throw that in there. But anyway, this video has gone on super long. I got to edit this thing and give and put it out there for you guys. Thank you guys for watching. All right. I appreciate you guys. Like I said, those of you guys that have stuck around, this video was for you, <laughs> for you people. <laughs> All right. Who asked me about this? I made this video for you. All right. Because I want you guys to be successful and I want you guys to, 
you know, if there's anything that I can say to help you with that, then I did my job. All right. Peace and love, y'all. Catch you on the next video. Peace.